Helen, she spoke to him. Her voice was calm, like Franklin Delano Roosevelt talking on war and social security through the hemp screen of an early polished mahogany radio, subdued and honest, powerful but not frightening, as his parents' parents had not been frightened, sitting on the laps of their parents in armchairs while the sun retreated over the orient woven through the carpet. No one knew, neither Franklin nor Will's parents' parents' parents, nor his grandparents, nor his parents, nor he, how the voice was exercised, nor why they were in love. He was frightened because the water rushing forth might dispossess them without warning. Helen, dirty and wet in his arms, looked into his kneeling deadpan eyes and said, Hold on and remember. When you were little, your mother spit curled your hair and wished you were what she never got. Remember? Then was I there for you, combing out the curls, helping you forget, straightening your crooked ways. Hold on to me, Will. We will know where we are going if you forget where you are from. Alas, another dry dream, too tied up in a conjured homophobia, too close to genuine homoerotica. Dreams aren't often suckered to the liars within us, but they aren't meant to make sense either. Just confound you with yourself. Chapter 4 there was one who always left Will's place angry and set the gate to the street to rattling, who paced and made him nervous, who could not be satisfied. When he was in good spirits, she played the drama queen. When he was down, she had to be up. She asked him to tell it like it is, and when he tried, she cut him off. Cass. Cass could move him from miles away. Through mutual friends. What has she done this time? You know she would sleep with anyone, and that guy she met, the roadside, who had a tattoo written in poorly figured block letters, psycho, across his chest, in that land that never quakes but will someday drown. Those who loved Will told him the truth about her, but it always had to be cryptic, like a tarot card reading. They risked being crippled by her thugs in the dark cave of starless night. So close, Cass. Where was she? He could feel her. The girls in the apartment below him made love and he listened window to window from above and smelled something like incense or formaldehyde and turned up his stereo after listening for a moment until the moans stopped like they knew he was there. The moans. He wished the scent was formaldehyde. Cass, in his nose, in his ears, in his eyes. His hands and his hair, he wished he could call her. She who fucked around behind his back, betrayed him with her bullshit hypocrisy, who he feared would plunge the needle to the vinyl vein to drown out her pain with some pop girl sap song. Very plastic of her.